hand, God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on these church and our online family and friends, I pray that you are holding on to God's unchanging hand. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight and we pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight will come from Hebrews 11, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 31. Hebrews 11, 23 through 31 examples of great faith. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. Verse number 29 says, It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. If you want to talk about faith, if you want to know where to find some examples of faith, go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I read several times, it was by faith. It was by faith. First of all, faith is the basic ingredient you need in order, to, in order to start a relationship with God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is the assurance that the things revealed and promised in the Word of God are true. Even though unseen, it gives the believer a conviction that what he expects in faith will come to pass. When you have faith in God, it doesn't matter what the king commands you to do. It doesn't even matter if you disappoint the king. Moses chose to be poor instead of enjoying the pleasures of sin. It took faith for the Israelites to go through the Red Sea on dry ground. It took faith faith for Israel to march around the city of Jericho and the walls fell down. It took faith for the prostitute Rahab to go against her people and hide the spies and trust in the true and living God. And because of that, she and her family were spared. God works through people like Rahab, whom we have inclined to reject. God remembered Rahab because of her faith and not her status. What I'm trying to tell you is put your faith in God and hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. No.
to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand. Changing hand, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus of Christ we come. Lord, we bless you. God, we honor you. We praise you. We magnify you. God, we lift you, Father God, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. We lift you, Father God, for you are the only true God. You are the only living God. You are the only God who keeps us and protects us. Now, Lord, we thank you for just being good and being God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for keeping us, Father God, and reminding us of who you are even on tonight. Lord, we bless your name. We, we praise your name. For your name is above anything that we can even ask or think. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless your word. Forgive us for our sins that we will re be re refreshed in your word. Forgive us for our sins, Father God, that we will acknowledge your word. Forgive us for our sins, Father God, that we will be blessed through your word. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We praise God one more again. We praise God one more time for another privilege, another honor to come before him and hear from him. It's an awesome thing. It's an amazing thing to hear from God. The great God of the universe has given us a privilege to hear from him. And for that, we ought to glorify him. We ought to lift him. And for that, we ought to rejoice. Matter of fact, whenever God allows us to meet with him, we ought to be blessed of the Lord. We ought to consider it a blessing just to meet with God. We have the, we have the ability tonight because Jesus has torn down the veil of the temple. We have the ability tonight to meet with the amazing, awesome God, the God of the universe, the God, the self-existing one, the one who has blessed us again. And I'm excited about it tonight. We come to the end of the book of Philemon tonight. We come to the end of the book of Philemon. We'll be in Philemon verses 21 through 25. Philemon verses 21 through 25 is where we will end this book tonight. And before we go further, we want to continue to look at the books of Paul, the Apostle Paul. So next week, we will begin with 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians will be where we are. We will be next week. 1 Thessalonians is where we will be next week. So go ahead and read ahead. Go ahead and listen ahead. Go ahead and get ahead. And uh, look at 1 Thessalonians, beginning at chapter 1. Uh, next week, we will be in 1 Thessalonians. But tonight, we're ending the book of Philemon. Philemon is the book. Some have called him a Philemon. Philemon or Philemon. Depends on where you grew up. Depends on how it was pronounced at your local church. So uh, the book of Philemon is a letter from the Apostle Paul to a slave keeper, a slave master called Philemon. The book of Philemon was written from Paul to Philemon, <clears throat> who is, Philemon is now a Christian. He is one who is in partnership with Paul in Christianity. 
And so Paul is writing this letter from a prison cell. He's writing this book of Philemon to, to, the, to Philemon. Now, Onesimus is the subject matter of this letter. Onesimus, or Onesimus, however you want to pronounce it, Onesimus, Onesimus, he is a former slave. Matter of fact, he still should be a slave. Matter of fact, he is a runaway slave. Yes, Onesimus is a runaway slave. He ran away from Philemon. While he was away, he and Paul became kindred spirits in Jesus Christ. He and Paul got together. Paul adopted him as his spiritual son. Therefore, in today's vernacular, we would call Onesimus the son in the ministry of Paul. Paul has claimed him. Paul has said to Philemon that I want you to come back. I want him to be able to come back to you, and I want you to receive him. So there are some messages that we find throughout this book of Philemon. First of all, Paul pleads Onesimus' case. You need a friend. You need a father in the ministry that will plead your case. Yes. As I present this tonight, I hope, I pray, I pray that Pastor Richard Jewel Rose of the Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church would plead my case. Mm -hmm. when, I'm, when I'm down and out, when, um, when I have done wrong and, and I have uh, asked God for forgiveness, I would pray that Pastor Richard Jewel Rose could write a letter on my behalf and say, as Paul says about Onesimus, he says about Onesimus that he is different now. See, all of us have messed up. All of us have fallen short. All of us, whether we admit it or not, we got some stuff that we are not proud of. <laughs> I said the other day to a preacher, I said, God is pulling the cover off a bunch of people right now. He, God is pulling the cover off a bunch of things right now. God is pulling the cover off a bunch of politicians right now. So I told him, man, I'm sorry, praying that God didn't pull the cover off my stuff. <laughs> I am praying, Lord, I know I'm guilty. Lord, I have fallen short. Lord, I have messed up. Lord, blot it out. Because God is the only one who can blot it out. I'm asking the Lord to blot out my mess. And you ought to ask the Lord, Lord, blot out my mess. Don't let it be uncovered, Lord. But in order for him to blot it out, you better, you better be willing to ask for forgiveness. You need to be willing to repent of your sin, to never turn back to it again. God can blot it out. God can shut the critics down, but you need to make sure that you confess your sins before God and ask God to blot it out. You want to be, you want to be forgiven by God. You want to be forgiven by mankind, but God is the only one that can blot it out. So Paul writes this letter to Philemon. He talks about Onesimus and he says, I am pleading Onesimus case. I, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, Paul puts himself on the level of a prisoner. He is in prison, but he's also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And I said to you that if you are not a prisoner of Jesus Christ, if you're not a prisoner of, of, of God the Father, if you're not a prisoner of the Holy Spirit, you are a prisoner for something else and somebody else. Mm -hmm. If you think that you're not a slave to God, if you're not a slave to Jesus Christ, you are a slave to something else or somebody else. So I'm willing. I'm willing, Lord. I'm willing to be a slave to Jesus Christ. Paul begins this letter by making his appeal. He talks about grace and peace be unto you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father God himself. He says... I thank God, and I'm always mentioning you, Philemon, in my prayer. It says, I thank God for you, for your faith, and for your love. Yeah. 
I'm, I am thankful for you of your faith and your love. And I'm also thankful for you according to how you share your faith. Let me share with you. Every Christian, every Christian, every person who has been saved have been anointed to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I want our church to be known as a church that share the gospel yes. of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It is power in this story. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, Paul says to us tonight that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We need to know the gospel. The gospel is simple. The gospel is the fact that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose early that third day morning, and he was seen by over 500 men. This is the gospel. It is a simple gospel, but it is not a cheap gospel. All right. It cost Jesus his very life. So Paul is saying, my heart goes out to all the saints there with you, including you. Uh, Philemon, my heart goes out to you, and uh, I am refreshed because of you. He, he says that I, I love the fact that you love others. So he appeals to him. He appeals to him. He, he pleads his case for Onesimus. Everybody needs somebody who can plead their case. Everybody needs somebody who will stand on their behalf, even when you messed up. That's why it's not beneficial for us to point at others' faults because we got some faults also. Yes, so we need somebody that will stand up. So he, he appeals, he appeals to Philemon on behalf of Onesimus saying, I know he's your runaway slave. I know he's done something wrong. I know he has messed up with you, but I'm asking you to forgive him for it. He says, I'm, I'm pleading the case for Onesimus. He is my son, my son in the ministry. Let me tell you, if your daddy won't plead your case, if your father in the ministry won't plead your case, you're pretty bad off. Mm -hmm. You need somebody who will plead your case. He says, I met him while he was in chains. He was at one time unprofitable to you, but now he is profitable. At one time, he may have been useless to you, but now he is useful. At one time, you may have been able to help him out, but now he can help you out. Yes. He pleads his case. He says, even though he has been in chain, even though I'm in chain, I'm asking you to allow him to come back and to allow him to be reconciled back to you. He goes on to say, uh, Philemon, I don't want you to do this out of compulsion. I don't want you to do this out of compulsion, but I want you to do it voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Paul says to Philemon that I want you to do this in such a way that you'd be glad about doing it. It offers great rewards. You see, when we forgive other people, it, it offers great rewards. Mm -hmm. We are rewarded when we forgive others. Stop trying to hold people down because they messed over you. God has the best plan. And God says, I will, God says, I will, I will revenge them. God says, turn it over to me. Don't you revenge them. Don't you get, a, get, get back at them. Let God do it. There's no one who can settle the case like God. God can settle the case and he can shut it down. Let God do it. So he says, Whatever you do, when you accept him back, don't consider him a slave any longer, but consider him a beloved brother. Wow. Now, whenever you are, whenever you've been forgiven, you're no longer a slave. You're a beloved brother. Paul, Paul says, now, when you see Onesimus, I want you to make sure that you consider him as a brother. Whatever you do, when you see Onesimus, know that he's your fellow brother in Jesus Christ. He's your brother in, in, in the spirit of the Lord. He is your brother. Consider him as a brother. He goes on to, toward the close of his, his letter, and he says to Philemon, I'm encouraging you to do this for me. 
And he goes on, he says, not only am I just encouraging you to forgive Onesimus for me, but don't you forget that I played a major role in you coming to Christ. Mm -hmm. He says, he says, now, don't get beside yourself. Don't act like you've done everything right. Mm -hmm. He says, remember, I, Paul, I'm writing this letter with my, with my own hands. He says, he says, if then you count me as a partner, receive him to you as you would receive me. If he's wrong you, I'm in verse number 18. If he's wrong you, then I tell you what to do. Hold it to my account. But well, Paul is standing up for this message. It says to us that even if a man, woman, boy, or girl been in prison, if a man, woman, boy, or girl have messed up, if a man, woman, boy, or girl has been a slave and have run away, Paul says, receive them back. Yes. And when you receive them black back, receive them with a better attitude than you had when they were there. Amen. He's useful to you. Paul says, if he owe you anything, I will repay it. Then he goes on to say, not owe me. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you owe me, you owe me, you owe me even your very own self besides. You owe me your very own life because I played a major role in your salvation story. Let me just say to you today, you need some major roles in their lives. You need people who you have played major roles in their lives. You need some people that can say that you made a difference in their lives in such a way that, that you became a son of Jesus Christ, a son of God because of them. You need somebody that can say you led them to Christ. I want to ask you this question, and it's not just a rhetorical question. I want to ask you a question today. How many people can say that you made a part, you played a part in their salvation. How many people can honestly say that you have made a difference in them coming to Christ? How many people can say that you opened your mouth and because of your opening of your mouth, they know Jesus even the better? Whether it was through you speaking the word, whether it was through you sharing the gospel with them, or whether it was through your lifestyle witness that you presented Jesus Christ. You see, my neighbors in my neighborhood, I may not ever speak to them about Jesus, but when they see my life in the community, it ought to let them know that I know the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know him? They shouldn't have to ask you where you're going on Sunday. They shouldn't have to ask you, are you a Christian? They shouldn't have to ask you, are you of the Lord's foe? Because your testimony shines brightly. You are one of God's because they see how you act, see how you talk, see how you carry yourself. Paul says, yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. He says, Philemon, don't disappoint me, man. <laughs> he says, Philemon, dig deep down within your spiritual bowels. Forgive this man. Receive him back as a brother in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Don't let it go on. That's why the Bible teaches, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't go, go to sleep mad at somebody and wake up tomorrow mad at somebody. What he says, forgive. Tonight he focused in verses 21 through 25. Paul focused and ends this letter by talking about obedience. Now here Paul is locked up in chains. Here's Paul who is walking with the Lord. Here's Paul that is not in the best of condition. Here's Paul that's on the verge of having his life snuffed, snuffed out. But he stops long enough, as he did in several books, to write on behalf of somebody else mm -hmm. so somebody else can be blessed. Yes. Paul says, 
There's no strive writing this. There's no stati statistician presenting this. There's no secretary doing this. Mm -hmm. I am writing these words to you. I'm appealing to you from my own handwritings. Mm -hmm. He says, Onesimus is going to come back. And when he comes back, I want you to receive him well. In verse 21, he goes on to say, Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. What's Paul talking about? Paul saying, first of all, I'm asking you to receive him, forgive him. And if you owe you anything, pay me, let, it, let me pay you for it. Put it on my account. And then he comes back and says, I have the confidence that you will be obedient. <laughs> Paul says, look, Philemon. I am confident that you're going to be obedient to what I'm asking you to do. And not only do I have confidence that you're going to be obedient to what I'm asking you to do, I got so much confidence that I believe you're going to go beyond what I've asked. That's just like the God we serve. That's just like the God we serve. The God we serve does abundantly more than we can ask or think. He, so while we're trying to figure it out, while we're trying to think about what we're going to say to God, God already got it figured out. He just want us to talk to him so we can create a better relationship to him, with him. Paul says to Philemon, I have confidence and I'm writing to you. I have confidence that you're going to be obedient and I'm writing to you, I write to you in such a way I know that you will do even more than what I ask. Now he's pulling on his heartstring. He he not only he not only have the confidence that he's gonna be obedient, but he also have confidence that he's gonna be compassionate. Be compassionate. You see, it's one thing to have pity on somebody. You see somebody struggling and you have pity, you feel sorry about it. Another thing is to have compassion. Yes. When you look at the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, the Bible says that when the man saw his son coming back, the prodigal son, when he saw him coming back, the Bible says that the daddy had compassion. Mm -hmm. The daddy saw him, had compassion on him, ran to him, fell on his neck and kissed him. See, when you have compassion, compassion drives you to do something about that pity you have. Driving down the street, I see this lady struggling, trying to get this towel on her car. She's just had a blowout. She's on the side of the road, and it got to be a woman now. I really don't stop for men. I see this woman struggling. I say, oh, I sure do have pity on her. But when I see her struggling, I have compassion because I stop to help her out. Have compassion. Have compassion. Paul, Paul says, not only will you be obedient, I got confidence that you're going to be obedient, but I also have confidence that you're going to take it even further. Mm -hmm. He says, I believe you're going to have some compassion. Paul sells his case. He sells his argument. He closes his arguments. And then he says, in verse 22, but meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me. <laughs> for I trust that through your prayers, I shall be granted to you. Paul, Paul says, prepare that guest room for me that you prepare for other folk when they come through. You see, it wasn't uncommon for people to welcome saints in the house of the Lord. It wasn't uncommon for the saints of God to prepare a place for the preacher. It wasn't uncommon for those who loved the Lord to invite others who loved the Lord to stay at their house. So Paul is not asking anything unusual. So uh, Philemon can identify with this. Philemon knows that this is a usual occurrence. He's saying, while you're at it, meanwhile, while you're going through forgiving Onesimus, let me ask you another thing. 
Let me ask you to prepare a place for me too. <laughs> he says, I've asked you to prepare a place in your heart for Onesimus, but now I want you to prepare a place in your house for Paul. Mm -hmm. We need a place in our hearts for people who messed up. Mm -hmm. And we also need a place in our house for people who are in the ministry. He says, while you had to go and prepare a place for me, meanwhile, prepare a place for me, that guest bedroom you have, go ahead and prepare that bedroom for me to come. Then he goes on to say, I trust that your prayer is going to get through to God. <laughs> he, says, he says, I trust that your prayer is going to get through to God. How does he trust that his prayer is going to get through? Because he's going to forgive Onesimus. And once he forgives Onesimus, it creates an open channel between Philemon and God. I want to say to you today, you don't have an open channel to God if you walk around with unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. The thing that opens up a channel to God is the fact that you're willing to forgive those who've done you wrong. How do you know you've forgiven? And so some people say, well, well, I've forgiven, but I haven't forgotten it. That's a cop out. Mentally, you may remember it. But when you see that person, you don't feel the same way you used to feel about them. That's when you know you're forgiven. When you see that person, it doesn't hurt you all over again. When you see that person, it, it doesn't attack your spirit man like it used to attack your spirit man. When you see that person, let me just share with you today. It's not worth holding on to unforgiveness. Yes. Paul says, as Jesus has says, unforgiveness will blockade your blessings. Mm -hmm. If you want to be blessed, you got to forgive others. Paul says, I trust that through your prayers, I shall be granted to you. He says, now when you pray, your prayers that you've been praying for me. When you pray, God will answer it. I believe that you're getting your prayer through. Mm -hmm. I believe that your prayers are getting to heaven because I believe and I have confidence. Look at the previous verses. I believe and I have confidence that you're going to forgive Onesimus. You're going to welcome him back to the house and you're going to bring him in as a fellow brother in Christ and not as a slave. Not only is he not going to be a slave, he's going to be useful to you. He's going to help you with the other slaves. Yeah. And as you forgive him, keep praying for me. Yeah. And I believe as you've been praying for me, I believe that I'm going to get out of this prison. Mm -hmm. And I believe because you're praying for me. Because you're walking in forgiveness because you're going to accept him back. And because you're not going to hold anything in your heart that's going to stop you from getting a prayer through to God, I believe I'm going to get out of prison. Paul says, Paul says, through your prayers, this shall be granted. He says, put a, save a space for me. Put a room aside for me. Get the room prepared for me because I'm getting out of here because I know your prayer is going to get through. He says, he says, through your prayers, I shall be granted to you. In other words, through your prayers, I shall be brought back in your presence. God going to grant it because you're praying for me. You're praying that I get out of here. Yeah, you're praying for me. You're praying. You ought to be praying for the preacher. Mm -hmm. Preachers today need prayer like never before. Yes. We all need prayer. We, we all confused without God. We're all confused without your prayers. We ought to be praying for preachers. We ought to be praying for pastors. How often do you pray for your pastor? How often do you pray for the, the ministers at your church? How often do you pray that God keeps them strong and keep the word of God coming and flowing uh, unhindered? How often do you spend time in your quiet time thinking about how God has unpacked the word of God through the man of God. You ought to be praying for your pastor. You ought to be praying for him. You, you ought to be praying for the fellow ministers of the, of the clergy. You ought to be praying for them. 
You ought to be praying for the body of Christ. You ought to be lifting God. That's right here in the text. Paul says that, that he ought to be praying for him, that he will be delivered. Not only should he be praying for him because he's a preacher, he ought to be praying for him because he's a fellow brother in the faith. Yes. If Christians going to make it, if Christians going to be all God wants them to be, Christians are going to have to start praying for each other. Amen. We got to pray for each other. We got to lift each other. Don't get stuck up on stuff. They didn't look at me right. They didn't talk to me. They didn't speak to me. On my bike ride, I, I, I drive through some neighborhoods sometimes. I ride through some neighborhoods. And every person I see, I wave my hand. Every person that, that let me across the street without running me over in the car, I raise my hand. Every person that I pass by, I raise my hand just to say hi. Now they've gotten used to me riding through their neighborhood. I may not be what they want me to be, but they've gotten used to it. And I thank you for your prayers. I've had some close calls. I thank you for your prayers. I've had some people that, that have impeded my pathway, but I believe your prayers has kept me strong. We ought to be praying for each other. We ought to be lifting each other up in ministry, lifting each other up, lifting our health up. We ought to be lifting our families up. We ought to be encouraging each other. We haven't seen each other. Some of us haven't seen each other in one full 365 days. We have not put eyes on each other in a whole year. Some of us. But we ought to be feeling the prayers of the saints. We ought to be lifting each other. We ought to be praying for each other. We ought to lift each other in prayer. Every time we think about it, somebody say, oh, you're going to live a long time. I was just thinking about you. First of all, were you praying for me? Secondly, you say I'm going to live a long time. I want to know, am I going to be healthy? Just because I called you when you were thinking about me, that's not enough for me. If I'm going to live a long time, I want to be healthy. If I'm not going to be healthy, let me get out of here where I can sing around the throne of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Finally, Paul says in verses 23 through 25, he, he calls the role again, the same role that he called in Colossians, the same role that he called in Philippians. Paul calls this role again in Philemon. Paul says, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you. Not only do my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Jesus Epaphras, greet you, so do Mark. So does Aristarchus. Aristarchus. So does Demas. Demas. And so do Luke, my fellow laborers, greet you. Let me tell you something. It's always good to say hello. <laughs> it's always good to let people know you're praying for them and thinking about them. All of us are fellow laborers in this gospel of Jesus Christ. We ought to be encouraging to each other. We ought to have a kind word with each other and for each other and to each other. We ought to always encourage each other. There's a special member, there's a special member, and she, she knows who I'm talking about, that always send encouraging notes, always talking about how I'm glad you're my pastor. Always saying, Pastor, I prayed for you today. There are others who do it, but this particular member does it religiously. I'm praying today for my pastor and my pastor's wife. Often, often, often. She does it oftenly. We need to be praying for each other. We need to be encouraging each other. We need to be greeting each other with kind words. Paul says, as I sign off, as I close out my letter, as I put in this salutation, the other brothers greet you also. So what Paul does is he makes sure that the church that meets in the house of Philemon knows that there are other saints that cares about them, that, that are greeting them, that are 
praying for them, that are going before the Lord on their behalf. He mentioned these same people in Colossians. He mentioned these same people in Philippians. Now he mentions it in Philemon. He's saying these are our co-workers. Let me tell you, you can't get much done if co-workers are always fighting. You can't get much done if co-workers don't lift each other up. You can't get much done if co-workers are already always and already at odds against each other. He says, these are my fellow co-laborers in the ministry. We, we greet you. And then he closes it out by saying, verse 25, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, be with your spirit, amen. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, amen. Let me just share with you. We have to get to a point in our lives where we take this word grace and make it reality. The word grace means favor. The word grace means trustworthiness. This word grace means that, that we want God to be a blessing to you. He says, may the blessings, may the favor, may the trustworthiness of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. He wants us to walk in, in the newness of Christ. Every single day is a brand new blessing from the Lord. What he really says is God's speed. What he really says is, is as you go forth, as he closes this out with his salutation, he says, as you go forth, will God give you favor? He's speaking blessings upon Philemon and his whole household. We as Christians must speak blessings upon each other, not cursings, but blessings. We must speak blessings upon each other, even in our spirits. That's why Paul says, I won't be able to be there with you, but I'm, I'm with you in spirit. I'm here in support. Our final point tonight is we must support each other. We must encourage each other. We must pray for each other. We must be a blessing to each other. We must support each other. Houston would have been even a bigger mess if people all over the city did not get together and support each other just a few weeks ago. It's because of our support one to the other that God was able to use us to bless each other. Don't talk to me about how God is going to bless me if you can't bless me. God is looking to use you to be a blessing to somebody, to give somebody favor because of what you know, because who you, your network, because who you're in contact with. God wants you to be a blessing to somebody. And not all the time, just your family. Some people don't want to bless anybody but their family. Paul says here, grace be unto you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be unto you. The love, the favor be unto you. And even in your spirit and be with your spirit. I want to share with you today that you're, if you're unsaved, you can't identify. You need to trust Jesus. You need to be a part of this family. It's a good family. It's a big family. It is an excited family. It is a family of Jesus Christ. Don't you want to be a part of this family? It's not enough to know God. You got to know Jesus in order to get to God. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You must get to know Jesus. You got to know him. It's too easy for you to know him. You got to want to know him. You got to want to know Jesus Christ. In the departing of your sins, you ought to need, you need to know him. My question tonight, do you know him? My statement to you is, you need to know him. I really want to know. 
Are you saved? The door is open. This is your moment. This is your moment to be among the brothers and the sisters of Christ. You need to know the fact that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. They nailed him tight. They killed him on the cross that day. Mean men misused Jesus. They took him off the cross and laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. Early that third day morning, Jesus the Christ rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And you can get to know him today. All you have to do is invite him into your heart that you would have the same spirit that Paul talks about. Will you join me today and invite Jesus Christ into your heart? Invite him in to make a difference. Invite him in so that you can go to heaven when you die. Will you trust him to do for you what you can't do for yourself? The door is open. The invitation is extended. Will you repeat after me? Repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life. Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you're now born again. You're on your way to heaven when you die. And not only are you on your way to heaven when you die, we believe that you have power to walk right while you're on planet Earth. We believe if you prayed this prayer, Jesus came into your life and Jesus is willing and able and available to empower you. So you will never be the same from this day forward. There may be others of you who who are saved and know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you have fallen short and fallen away from the church, fallen away from God. I want to pray that you get right with him. I want to pray that you rededicate yourself, recommit to him, get reconnected to him. If you're saved, you're always saved, but you're not following the right way that Jesus would have you to follow. So I want to say to you today that you... You can turn away from sin and come back to God. I'll say to you today that you can stop neglecting God. Stop, stop neglecting the church. Stop neglect, neglecting messages from the Lord and walk with him. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, we come for this. Our brothers and sisters, we come praying for them. We pray that you bless them and keep them. Encourage them. Bless them to be redeemed. Bless them to be reconnected. Bless them to be revived. Encourage them to walk with you, never to walk away again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. There are others of you who are who don't have a church home. Are you in between church homes? I want to offer you the New Beginning Church to be a full-fledged member of the New Beginning Church. We believe that the New Beginning Church is following Christ's direction. If it's right to be in church, it got to be wrong to be out of church. I submit to you, join the New Beginning Church. You can do so uh, by inboxing me and let me know you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church. You can live here or wherever in this world and you can still be a member. Just inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, thank you for joining us as we come to break down the word of God through Philemon. It is now offering time.
time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is time to give to the Lord. It's time to give tithes and offering. You don't have to wait till Sunday. You don't have to wait till the next meeting. You can come tonight and give to the Lord. You can give by three means on tonight. You can give uh, by Zelle. We prefer that you either give by Zelle or by P.O. Box. But our cash app is still available for those of you who are yet to, to connect with Zelle or connect through a P.O. Box. Our cash app is cash tag NBC Souls, cash tag NBC S O U L S, cash tag NBC Souls. Our preferred method is Zelle. Zelle's account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is as Jesus is lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. Our third mean is by P.O. Box. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Again, thank you for joining us here tonight uh, for our Sunday our Bible study. We are here every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Please continue to join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and on Sunday morning for our regular service for uh, 1045, our broadcast service at 1045. Our 9 o'clock service is a Sunday school service. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to follow us and continue to be a part of our service here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you so much for being a part on tonight. We want to continue to pray for those who are, are still going through the effects of, of the storm, the winter storm. We want to make sure that you understand that we are lifting you before God and that God will give you favor, even with insurance, even without insurance, even with government agencies. We're praying that God continue to bless you. Also, we're looking forward to our parking lot service on Resurrection Sunday, April 4th, April 4th. 2021, we're looking forward to our parking lot service. We had a parking lot service last Resurrection Sunday. We're looking forward to our parking lot service on April 4th, 2021. Our service will start at 9.45 a.m. 9.45 a.m. Uh, vaccinations are available. There are plenty now. Uh, we are looking forward to you being vac vaccinated. I have my appointment on March 17th to be vaccinated. I believe that vaccination is, is a way out of what we're doing now. It's a way out of getting back to, it's a way to get back to normalcy. So uh, March 17th, I will have my vaccination. And, and so uh, if you are looking for a number by which you can call, I do have a number for the Johnson & Johnson vaccination. Please call me or, or inbox me and I'll let you know where it is here in the city of Houston. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for being a part of our service. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up to the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding of the book of Philemon. We ask you to lead us into obedience, lead us to understanding, and lead us to, to forgiveness, Father God. And bless us, Father God, to, to hold close to your word, that your word will be a blessing to us. Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.